Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? It's so good to see you again, right? Not that I can see you literally, but hey, it's good to have you once again, right? And in this week's market analysis, right, we'll be covering, you know, quite a few markets, right? The Forex markets, the indices, the bonds, the metals, and etc. right? But first, all right, I want to share with you an announcement. Okay, so just a quick announcement, right? There will not be a weekly market analysis next week because I'll be hosting a webinar, right, with my friend Steve Burns. Okay, so Steve, right, Steve is basically a trader with over 20 years trading experience. He specializes mainly in the stock markets and swing trading, right? So he has been you know, featured in numerous trading magazines and blogs, right? He has, you know, written over 16 books to date, right? To help traders, you know, succeed in this trading business. So in this webinar, right, Steve will be sharing with you, right, you know, how to find an edge over the other market players, right? The real possibilities that you can expect in trading, right? He's not going to hype you with any BS, but rather just the straightforward facts and truth about trading. So if you, you know, you really want to know, you know, what are the possibilities, right? Or how much you can make in trading? What is the reality of it? Then Steve, right, is someone who is going to, you know, answer you in all honesty, right? He'll talk about how to develop a winning system, right? To find trades with favorable risk to reward, uh, to read the different types of market price action and how to use it to trade profitably and much more. So these are just some of the uh, the topics that he will be covering, right? So if you're interested, right, mark your calendars down, right? I've put it very obvious, March 12th, right? It is a Sunday, right? Sunday, March 12th, and it is starting at 9 a.m. Eastern time, right? So if you're in Singapore, that will be 9 p.m., right? After doing the time, time zone converter, right? So if you're not sure, you know, what time 9 a.m., Eastern is in your time zone, just click on this blue link over here, right? This time zone converter link, and it will help you, you know, uh, tell you what is the respective time, right? The event will start in your time zone, okay? And an important thing to do is that you need to register for this event, right? So I can give you a link to the webinar. If you don't register it, right, I cannot give you the link, right? So even if you can't make it for this event, right, do register as well, so I can actually send you a copy of of the recordings, right? So to register is very simple. Just click any of this uh, orange button that you see here, right? And you are you are set. So for example, right, if I click this orange button, right, you'll come to this page over here, right? So I've actually opened up already, right? So all you need to do is just put in your name, email, email, right? Your name, last name, and email, right? Then you just click register, and you are good to go. Right, I I, I won't click register since I've you know I'm already registered. Right, so that's all you need to do to register for this up and coming free webinar with my friend Steve Burns. Okay. Now moving on to you know this week's market analysis. Right, since this is the first week of the month, what I typically like to do is to give you a broad overview of what's happening in the financial markets. So today we'll be looking at you know. A different, uh, the different sectors of the markets, right? So we are starting first with the uh, major currency pairs, right? So what you're looking at right now is, is Euro dollar, right? You can see that uh, on last Friday, we have this very strong bullish candle, right? Price closing higher. And it basically, you know, had a bounce off this uh, weekly, this red line over here is the weekly support level, right? So in my opinion, if you ask me, there's a good chance of, the, of this market retesting possibly back towards this uh, area of resistance, right? And possibly maybe, you know, even going short lower, right? So one thing to note is that Euro dollar has been, you know, in a very massive downtrend, right? In fact, if you look at it, it's still pretty much is in a range over the last few years, as I, you know, as you can see on this chart over here. So this is actually somewhat near the lows of the range, Okay, so if you are really you know thinking you know long term that you know, you find that you know euro dollar is at a very attractive level, maybe you're you know trading based on fundamentals and stuff like that, right? Then you know this is pretty much the big picture right now, right? Maybe if you have uh, you know uh, a setup, a bullish setup that you want to go long, right? Then yep, this is something that you can consider. But for me, I will only go long, right? If price can you know come back to this level, starts to consolidate, right, and maybe you know look to break up, that is a possibility where I'll look to go long. But for me, based on technicals right now, uh, to me, I rather stay on the short side. Okay, so this is for euro dollar, pound dollar, right? Again, right, pretty much still in a downtrend, right? You can see that I've gotten this line up, which is the two hundred MA. Okay, so price is pretty much still in a downtrend series of you know lower highs, right? You can see lower highs. Right, and this is basically the area of resistance that you, that uh, I would say you had an opportunity to short if you, you know you were looking at this uh, area, 
okay? So pound dollar, right, still bearish. Aussie dollar, right, pretty interesting, right? Last week, we have a, a quite quite a strong sell-off, right, on Thursday, right? Then Friday had, a, you know, slight, slight gains over here. So Aussie dollar, right, among all the currency pairs, I would say Aussie dollar is, in fact, one of the relatively stronger one. If you look at a weekly time frame, right, Aussie dollar, right, it's actually basically still in the range, but it's actually near the high end of the range, okay? So what could potentially happen, right, is that this market could come back to retest these highs, form a build-up or consolidation, and break out higher, right? If that could happen, right, I'll be looking to go long on the Aussie dollar, okay? So in the meantime, right, I'm still, you know, on the sidelines for Aussie dollar, but this is a potential scenario that could occur maybe in the next few weeks, for Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar, right, not looking too good, right, basically, you know, approaching back this area of support in New Zealand dollar, okay? So pretty much, again, uh, similarly, it's still in the range contained between these highs and you know, this area of support, right? So in such a market, you know, condition, right, if you were to trade range, right, then logically speaking, you know, you want to be buying low and selling high. But the thing, if you ask me, right, sometimes, you know, if the range does expand over time, like for example, this one over here, initially the range is here, then it expand higher, then it came back in, right, came back lower, then go all the way up higher, but not retesting these highs, right, then come down lower, trade higher, then now this time down, the range expand one more time again, right, came down lower, taking out these lows, and then going back into the range. So at this point in time, if you want to trade the lows of the range, right, I mean, Textbook setup says that, you know, the range is like this, right? Just buy low, sell high. But you can see that in reality, it's not as simple as it is. Because if you think about this, right? Which part of the range do you want to get long, right? Are you going to be waiting at these lows? Or would you just settle for this uh, area of support, which, you know, has been tested a number of times, right? So if you were to go long, say, somewhere in this area of support, right? Where are you going to put your stop loss? Will you put it, uh, say, over here? It may not make sense, right? Because this is still, after all, another uh, minor area of support. Right, so you have a lot of things to consider, right, if you want to trade, trade this range because there are multiple levels in this range, right? So you need to think about how to actually, you know, uh, plan your trades in this type of situation. For me personally, uh, I'll not trade it, to be honest. I'll just, you know, stay on the sidelines till I get something cleaner and something more obvious, right? So New Zealand dollar again, right? If you want to trade, so bear in mind, you know, the things that I've just shared with you. Dollar Canadian, right? Okay, so we have a... A rally right over the last few days right you can see price retesting this highs and then got rejected on this candle over here right a, a bearish pin bar if you call it okay so at this point in time right again this market somewhat in the range between these highs right this is the area of support and you probably have another one somewhere around here okay so for swing traders right i would say this is an opportunity you know for you to actually you know go short right as price got rejected based on this highs over here right if you want to look to uh have a target profit i would say this over here, right, previous resistance that could potentially act as support. This would be a, a, a potential area that you may want to, you know, take your profits off the table, right? This is for a swing trading perspective, okay? So this is for dollar Canadian. Dollar Yen uh, still, you know, is pretty much bullish, right? But as you can see, the price action is getting choppy over here, right? Just Price is just basically, you know, uh, going back and forth, right? Somewhat in a small range over here, right? So if you ask me, uh, uh, for me, there is nothing for me to do on dollar yen at this point in on at this point in time, right? Even though I am bullish in this market, so this is what you can see, right? Based on the major currency pairs, uh, most of them are in a range, right? Except I would say pound dollar is in a more definite downtrend, and the dollar yen, right, is in a cleaner. I would say it's in a more obvious uptrend, right? So it's pretty mixed, right, for the major currency pairs. Alright, so let's have a look at gold, right? I think uh, someone actually, you know, mentioned that, you know, he would like me to analyze gold. So for gold, you can see that uh, this market, right, at least at least for now, it is bullish, right? You can see a series of higher lows, right? And on Friday, we have this, uh, this somewhat of a bullish pin bar that form, price closing higher. So if you ask me, right, I won't be surprised if this market can go back and retest this highs over here, right, for gold, right? So in the short term, right, I would say gold, uh, I won't... I won't be surprised, you know, if price were to trade higher. Okay, so how about the stock markets, right? So the stock markets are looking, you know, bullish across the board, right? So we'll start with the S&P 500. So it's straightforward, right? If you are looking to short the stock markets at this point in time, right? I would highly suggest you, you think again, right? Why do I say that? Because if you look at the S&P right now, right? You look at the weekly, you look at the monthly, Right? The problem with shorting this market at this point in time is that there is no structure to reference from to place your stop loss. 
right? If you look at the da- let's let's stick with the daily, right? Shall we? So if you look at the daily, right, right? If you just just zoom out a little, right? There is no resistance overhead over here, right? There is no resistance above because it is basically trading near the all time highs. So looking to short this market at this at this juncture is you know basically going against the trend, right? It's something that I never do. And I would I would encourage you know other traders to do as well unless you know maybe you're experienced you know trading in this manner but really right shorting at all time highs right is really something that is you no know, really against you as a trader right because you know there's just no structure to place your stop loss there is no resistance there is there is nothing right you're just in the middle of the in space you're just in the middle in space right so yeah right be be careful right if you're looking or thinking of shorting the stock markets right thinking that it can't go any higher right trust me right the markets right can be can go as high as it wants to right so there is really nothing to stop it right maybe unless you have 10 trillion 10 trillion dollars in your pocket and you short the market maybe right you can you know cause a reaction right but if you don't have that right then just stick to the trend okay so if you're looking to trade the S&P from the long side, then this is the 20-period moving average, right? A pullback towards it, right? Would be an opportunity for you to get long, okay? So another indices is the Nikkei 225, right? You can see that it's still in an uptrend, right? In this range over here, right? If it does break out, right? We can see uh, perhaps a sustained move higher, okay? Uh, which, are, which other markets? The DAX, the DAX, this one over here, right? Looking bullish as well the dex right so you can see that you know generally the stock markets the u.s stock markets the nikkei which is the japanese stock markets the stock markets in the european side of things are all looking bullish and let's move on now to the bond markets shall we right this this is this sector is a little interesting because as you've known right the, the u.s you know has started raising interest rates so you shouldn't be surprised to actually see this downtrend over here right because you know when interest rates goes up the value of the bond go, go down, right? They have this inverse relationship. So you can see a, a downtrend over here in the 10-year treasury bond. And over here, it was actually a very valid trading setup, right? Some traders would call this the engulfing candle, okay? Some traders like me, I call this the false break of these highs, right? So either way, it's a valid trading setup to go short. But I didn't go short over here because the swaps that, that I need to pay, it's very expensive for me, right? And it doesn't really, uh, it's against my rule to trade such expensive swap, right? So whenever you're trading, you know, more uh, exotic products, always be aware of the swaps you're paying, right? And, you know, you have to find such information from your broker side of things, how much they are charging you per day because it really differs from broker to broker. So it's your responsibility to find out what is the current swap of the market you're trading? Okay, so so I said that this the bond sector is interesting because if you look at the uh, the bond, which is the bond market for the for the for the German bond, is the bond right? And the UK bond, right? They are pretty much you know in opposite direction. So the bond, you can see that you know it basically broke out of this uh, somewhat of a range over here, right? Broke out and now it's retesting back this previous resistance turn support, right? So this could be a poss- possible area to get longs, right? And likewise, for the UK bond, you can see that it also broke out, right? And then you have this uh, possibly a flag pattern forming, right? Which could, you know, fuel further price advance. So these are basically, you know, at the opposite end of the 10-year treasury bond you saw earlier, like this, this one over here, right? And it all boils down to the interest rate, right? Because, you know, in the UK side of things and the German side of things, right? Uh... They have not, you know, raised any interest rate on. And there's no expectations of them to, you know, still raise interest rates. So this is why there is this uh difference in the prices right now. So these are the, all the fundamental side of things. If you want, you can always read up. But to be honest, I don't let fundamentals make, uh, will say affect my trading decisions. I trade price and price only. But for those of you who are wondering why is there this discrepancy, right? So this is something you know, just for you to know. Okay, so uh, last but not least, I want to talk is oil, right? Because oil is a really interesting market right now. If you look at the weekly time frame round of oil, you can see that it's basically went into a really, really tight range over here, right? And one thing about the market is this, right? This is not theory. This is based on, on facts, right? Is that the market, it goes from a period of low volatility to high volatility, right? This is like, like the, the pattern that the market tends to exhibit. Right, so over here, right, this is a period of low volatility, and if you ask me, right, uh, sometime in the future, this move, uh, this, uh, this consolidation is going to break out. I have no idea whether it's going to break out higher or lower, right? Honestly, I, I have no clue, and I can't predict, right? 
But if you ask me, if you point a gun to my head and ask me to make a decision, right, I would say higher, right? If you were to ask me, right? Honestly, I have no clue at all, right? But if you just have to, you know, put a gun in my head and say, you know, Raina, pick one up or down, I'll just say up, right? Why do I say up? Because again, right, looking at the daily time frame, right, uh, I see a series of higher highs, higher lows. I'll just stick with the trend and just say up. Right, I could be wrong, right? Never know. But I would say this is definitely a market you want to keep a close watch on, right? Because of the fact that volatility has shrunk over the last few months. Okay? So, yep, right? That's all I have for you in this week's market analysis, right? Let's do a quick recap, right? Uh, number one, we talk about the major currency pairs, right? So, I said that, you know, uh, most of them are in the range markets, all right? Except for, I think, dollar yen is looking bullish and pound dollar still looking bearish. Then we covered uh, gold, right? The metals like gold, right? I say that, you know, it's still looking bullish in the short term, right? Number three, we talk about the indices, right? They are definitely bullish as well, right? Because you can see the very nice trend that is happening across the the uh, M the US stock markets, right? The European stock markets and the Asian stock markets. Then number four, we talk about the bonds, right? There is a, uh, I would say some uh, difference between them because right, the US Treasury bonds, right, they are basically in the downtrend, whereas the the boon and the UK bond, they are somewhat still you know, looking to break out higher. So for bonds, right, that is uh, some slight differences over there. And the fifth thing we talk about is oil, right? Very interesting market, right? Uh, I'm expecting volatility to expand in, you know, I have no idea which direction. So it's a market that you want to pay attention to. And last but not least, right, number six, the webinar we have next week, right, Sunday, 12th of March, right? If you... Have not registered, right? Please do so. I'll put the link below so you can register for it. Okay? So that's all I have for you in this week's market analysis. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and the like button so I know that you enjoy it, right? So with that, right, I wish you all good luck and good trading. Talk to you soon.